If you don't want to build like this noob and you want to know how to build an automated Chinese face, then this video is for you. Hello guys, in the last episode, I presented you guys a beautiful Chinese house, but I decided to bring it a little further. So in this episode, I'm showing you guys how to build this automated Chinese courtyard face. As you can see, this build is quite massive, and it's actually a project cooperated by me and my partner, the Buff Noob. Today, I'm bringing the Buff Noob with me as my assistant, and he will help me to do all the explanation about this build for you guys. Hey guys, it's the Buff Noob here. And just to let you guys know, I can actually build better stuff than those tiny noob houses you can see in the intro. To begin with, let me just explain some basic design concepts behind this build. The overall form structure of this build mainly resembles a traditional Chinese house style called Si He Yue, or maybe rectangular walled courtyard house in English, I guess. They are not really Chinese castle or palace, but still function as a sort of fortified structures in many cases. So you probably won't find many or any windows on those very plain exterior walls. But on the other side, the wall facing the courtyard features a rich and vibrant color combination along with many colorful paintings on beams and pillars. The base we are building today has three layers, which is the most common type of Si He Yuan in China. The front layer is usually for guest room or servant room. The middle layer is the main courtyard and the main building right behind the courtyard. The back layer contains another stack of rooms with some minor garden area. There are in total 16 rooms in this space. That's quite a lot and it should have more than enough spaces to make it your ultimate survival base. We won't make an interior design for every single of them but we will do some examples showing you guys how to decorate them in an aesthetic and functional way. We will also show you guys how we decorate every single courtyard space of this space and hope we could give you guys enough inspirations. Before we get to the actual tutorial, let me first give you guys a tour showing you every single details of this space. Right here in the front is the entrance room of our base. And these are probably the smallest and cutest stone statues you can make in Minecraft. There is also a large Chinese lantern hanging under the ceiling. The floor has a cyan terracotta pattern and there is also a couch at each side. After passing the entrance, the first thing we can see is this stone crafting decoration on the wall, as well as two fountains on the left and right side. The plant surrounding the pool really brings out a sort of natural vibe to the entrance. On the right hand side of the entrance is the stock up area, which features a small well and a shelter that hays and other utility items can be stored here. Then, if we move to the left of the front entrance, we will see a second entrance on the right as well as some lounge area with a rock mountain, a couch and a desk. The scaffoldings at the corners allows light to pass through and lighten up the floor. At the opposite side of the second entrance is a large room that we made it into a hall stable. The ceiling here is mainly made of scaffolding featuring a sort of grid design segmentized by pillars and beams made of oak logs. There are plenty of space here that you can store not only your horses but any animals you want in this room. The space in front of the windows can also be used to store any survival items you need. Before we actually going through the second entrance, we would like to take a look at this space that functions as a sort of performing area. Walk sitting next to the bamboos is a small performance stage, and the three looms in the center act as a Chinese instrument on the stage. If we look at the tree next to the stage, you'll find some cages hanging under the leaves and they act as parrot cages for some extra decoration. And now, as we're going through the second entrance, you can now see the whole picture of our central garden sitting in front of the main building. Before we look into the details of the garden, we are going to walk around the garden all along this side corridor. This corridor is actually my favorite feature of this build as it surrounds the whole central garden and you can just enjoy this beautiful garden view while walking along it. 
There is a small room behind the corridor at each of the four corners of this space and you can just use them as storage rooms for survival. Then we keep walking along the corridor and you will come to this large room at the left and right side of the base. You have turned this room into a Chinese dining hall or a restaurant if you would like to call. The floor is made of mushroom blocks and it really fits well for a Chinese themed interior design. The ceiling is another grid design made of green terracotta and sandstone walls. They are also segmentized by stripped acacia logs. The walls are mainly decorated with paintings and there is also a fish pool in the middle of the room and decorated with bamboos and stone craftings at the back. The other side of this room is a waiting or reception area and a kitchen at the back separated by a wall. The kitchen is not only made for decoration purpose but also features plenty of furnaces and smokers for your survival smelting room. Next. We are going back to the central garden, which is divided into four sections by a cross path with a hot pot area in the middle and some Chinese lampposts at the sides. The first section of the garden is a large pond with some plants surrounding it and a rock mountain in the middle. And this is a very typical pond design for Chinese gardens. The next section here is a multi-functional region, which features a small playground, a small pond, an outdoor dining area and a sakura tree at the back. Then, for this region, you can find another small pond at the back connected by a stone path and next to the path is a flower trough and a planting or farming area. The last region here mainly features a large wishing tree which you can find some wishing plates hanging on it. Next to the tree are some shelters, providing some seats as well as a chess table with a note block and a table to write your wishing plates. Right now, we will take a look at the main building of the base. The first thing you would notice is a large screen in the middle with a Chinese painting on it. And this is a very typical layout for traditional Chinese houses. The cupboard divides the right side of this floor into a study area and the left side is a staircase to the second floor and I have tried my best to make this staircase look as nice as possible while resembling to the traditional one. The upper floor is mainly the bedroom which features a Chinese style bed with a small screen hiding it. You can also find a bathtub and another study desk in this room. And guys, please remember that the tutorial for this main building is in our previous video and don't forget to check them out. For the last part of our tour, we are going to the back of the main building and this is the back layer of our base. The space here are mainly decorated with plants and leaves with some glowstones hiding underneath for illumination. We had also made an interior design for this small room into a functional room. The nether portal in the center is Toxicali's idea and I really love how it looks with the Chinese gateway design in a compact size. The right side of this room is an enchanting area with some bookshelf designs while the left side is a brewing area with pistols as tables again. The layout of this room is rather symmetrical but not totally identical. And the barrels hiding underneath the table gives you some extra storages without making this room look too cramped. There are two more garden areas in the back layer of the base the one on the right is another pond with a rock mountain and some plants but this time we added some vines on the wall to make it look livelier. The other space on the left is made into a chilling area with another rock mountain, a tree in a pond and a sun umbrella table but in a folding stage. And this is everything I'm showing you for this tour. And now let's take a look at the materialist and get to the tutorial. Please note that the material here is for reference and the amount you need might be slightly different. Before we actually building, please find the layout of this base in the description and use it as a foundation. The first thing we do here is to build the base of the entrance room in the front.
here we are building the two walls on the left and right side. And this is how we build the top section of the wall. Then, on the inner side of this wall, we are building the first two layers of the roof. Also building a horn-like craft tank at this corner on the top. Then we just mirror everything to the other side and filling up the roof like what we just did. And the next part is to build the front of the entrance. Backside is roughly the same, just some minor difference around the stairs. After that, we are building a small room right next to the entrance. The top section of this wall is very similar to the one on the entrance. And again, we start building the first two layers of the roof on the inner side of this wall. And we filling the whole roof in the same way as well as adding some minor details at the corner. And this is how we build the wall on the entrance side of this room. Then the canopy for this side is the same as the opposite side. For the longer room at the other side of the entrance, we first constructing the outer walls just like what we did for the other side and build the top section the same way as the other side again and building the roof exactly the same way as before. After that, we start building the wall on the left side. Then we build the wall on the right side. Then we start building the canopies for these two sections. And basically the same way as what we did before. The 
again, we build the same canopy design for the opposite side of the wall. And remember to add a trapdoor here. And here, we start building the second entrance on the second layer of our entire structure. And we start with its base again. Then we build the wall on the level right side with the empty section in the middle as well as a double arch design on the top. Again, we start constructing the roof on the inner side of this wall. Again, we just mirrors everything to the opposite side as well as filling up the roofs and adding a stair to each corner. And this is how we build a wall around the entrance side. And also building a canopy below the roof. The wall on the other side is exactly the same. Then we go to this side of our base to build another major structure and we start with its base again. Following up, we start constructing its exterior walls and leaving an arch on each of the lateral sides. Following up, we build the top sections of the lateral walls and constructing the roof on the inner side again. Again, you just mirror everything to the opposite side and filling up the roofs in the same way again. Also adding a crafting at the top of each corner. And adding trapdoor and buttons on the front. Following up is to build a wall on the inner side. Basically similar to what we did before, but with some extra minor details on it. You can make those windows either open or close as you like. This wall is also symmetric with a big entrance in the middle. Right now, we start building some supporting pillars for the outer part of the roof and some terracottas and fences for decoration. And this is how we build the crafting in the center. The next thing to do is to build the canopy outside the pillars. And also, don't forget to build the canopy at the opposite side. up, we will build two smaller rooms on the left and right side of the structure we just built. The top section of the wall is in a similar way as before again, as well as the way to construct its roof. This is the smallest room in our entire structure, so it has less details on its walls. Right now, we mirror the smaller room to the other side of the larger room. Then we mirror this entire three-room structure to the opposite side of our landscape. And after that, we go to the back of our landscape and start building the room in the middle of this section.
this part, we will also build two hanging lanterns in front of the entrance. And following up, we will build a room on the right side and further split it into two smaller rooms. Right now, we just mirror the whole thing to the left side to finish this back section. Then, we go back to the second entrance and start building our side corridors right next to it. And we will open up two windows and a doorway for this side of the wall. And for this side, we will also open up a window as well as adding two paintings next to it. The next part is adding fences and terracotta for our corridors. And this is how we build the roof of our corridor. After finishing the roof, we duplicate two more sections of this corridor on this side. And this is how we construct the turning corner for the roof of the corridor. For this side, we will duplicate the corridor sections 5 times with building one block of empty space at the end. After that, we will finally build the main building in the center. Please find the tutorial of this build in our previous video. Following up, we will build the side corridor connecting to the main building. We start with the wall on this side. Then, we need to fix the side entrance of our main building to allow it connecting to the side corridors. And the corridor right here has fences for both sides and with no walls. Again, the roof of this corridor is the same as before. And we just mirrors the whole corridor to the opposite side. And finally, we start filling some walls at the back of our landscape. And please be careful with the direction of stairs we place here. And for the opposite side, we will just add the stairs in the same way. Next wall we are building here is actually very similar, just leaving an extra archway and a window space on it. Again, the other side of this wall is basically the same. And we will just mirror these two walls to the opposite side. Then we go to the front of our landscape to filling up some more walls. We start with the outermost wall. Then we construct the wall connecting to the front entrance. The stairs here are all in the same direction. Finally, we use the same way to build 3 more walls right here and our build is done. Now, 
we move on to the interior design. The first thing we do is to build an arch ceiling for the front entrance. And adding some minor details on the side walls. In the center of the ceiling, we build a large hanging Chinese lantern. The next thing we do is go to this large room right next to the entrance. We use some locks for the frame of the walls and the ceiling and use some scuff foldings as a grid ceiling and allow some lights to pass through. Then we change the materials of the floor and use some fences to make a horse stable. Then we just make more sections like this one by following the space of red pillars. You can put whatever animal you need right here. You can also put some minor details at these corners. I decided to put some hay and a farming cart right here. The space in front of the windows can also be used to store extra survival items you need. And I changed the base of the pillars to pistol to make it look better. And right now, we are going to build a double arch ceiling for the second entrance. And also add some plants at the four corners. For this large room, we are going to make a Chinese restaurant or a dining hall depends how you look at it. The first thing is to make the pillar sections as well as another grid ceiling design with walls and terracotta. After that, we can put in some tables and chairs as well as some decorations on the wall. Then, we just duplicate this section once more in the next window space, following up with the middle section with the same pillar design as well as the ceiling design. The back of the middle section is going to be a fish tank area and some bamboos at lateral sides. The next section is going to be a waiting area with some couches and a table in it, after this section, we are building a wall right next to it, which divides the remaining area into a kitchen. The ceiling is again in the same design, but the floor is in another texture. For this wall, we are going to put a lot of furnaces on it which should be quite useful for your survival mode to make this room more practical. The last wall is going to be a standard cupboard design. And finally, we go to this small room in the back. The pillar and the ceiling design is a bit like the previous room, which also features a grid ceiling with sandstone walls. For the section on the right, we are going to make it into an enchanting area. The placement of bookshelves here will be able to give you max level enchantment. For this section on the left, we are going to make it into a brewing station with the same pillars and ceiling design and decorate the walls in a similar way to give it a sort of symmetric but not redundant layout. Finally, for this middle section, the ceiling is going to be the same and we are going to put a nether portal with a little Chinese archway design on it. Finally, we will just fix some minor details behind the door and our interior design is done. Now, for the garden design, the first thing to do is to build a long pond all along the front wall with some rocks and plants in an irregular look design. Then right behind the entrance, we can build a stone painting on the wall and two fountains on both of the lateral sides. 
as well as a small pond and some plants to decorate this area. The next space here is going to be a stock up area, which features a small well and a shelter to store some hay. And also we can texturize a floor like this. The area right here can be decorated with some plants and leaves. Don't forget to hide some glowstones underneath. Then for the space next to the second entrance, we can first build a small rock mountain and some bamboos next to it. Also, we can add a couch and a table to make it a lounge area. The other spaces can be decorated with plants and leaves again, then mirror everything to the other side with some small variations. For the next space, it's first going to be a bamboo area, then a performance area by using three looms as an Chinese instrument called Wu Feng. The space in front of the room can be decorated with plants and leaves again, as well as adding a small table and two small chairs. The last space here can be made into a tree, with some scaffoldings and trapdoors as Paris cages. Then, for this corner of the center garden, we are going to make a large pond. We texturize it with a variety of blocks and slabs and adding more plants surrounding it and finally another rock mountain in the center. The next space here is going to be composed by multiple ponds. The first pond here is going to be a playground and another smaller pond right next to it. In front of the pond is going to be an outdoor cooking area as well as a dining table right under a sun umbrella. For the space behind the playground, we are going to make a small sakura tree with some purple color blocks. For the next corner, we are first going to build another pond and also another flower trough with a cobblestone path right next to it. And right next to the path is going to be a planting or farming area. Then, for the final corner, we can first build a flower trough all along the edge and in the middle of this space, we can make a large tree here and make it as a Chinese wishing tree with some banners on it. In front of the tree is going to be a shelter for placing those wishing signs on the tree as well as some bamboos in the middle space. Then for this side, we are going to build two more shelters with some chairs and the nook block is used as a chest plate. For the cross path in the center, we will first build two tall lamp posts at each side of the path, then a hot pot area in the center, surrounded by four shorter lamps, and adding some more lamps and lamp posts on each side of the path. And following up, we move to the back side. For this bait, we would build another pond with a rock mountain in the back, but this time also adding some vines on the walls. The other spaces can be decorated by plants and leaves just like before. Then, for the last space right here, we'll first make another rock mountain in the corner, then make another sun umbrella in a closing state, also another small pond with a small island in the middle. And finally, we can make another tree in the island and our garden is completed. Here we have guys, that's everything for our tutorial. I hope it's clear and efficient enough for everyone to follow. We really spent a lot of time and effort to make this for you guys. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you find our content inspirational and enjoyable. And one more thing, if anyone actually build this in their server or even in survival world, please do let us know in the comment section. This would really show your love and support to our creation and we will truly salute you guys. I'm going to try more new building styles and please let me know what you guys want to see. And if it is too large then I probably need the buff noobs to assistant again. And yeah, I'll probably keep making those loop houses in every intro. I think that's it for this video and peace out.